Okay, here we go. I sincerely wish you could smell what a $150 lot of old consoles and yeah. smells like. That's the key, because this looks like uh, way more than $150 worth, but there's going to be reasons for that. Perfect. So my wife and I recently picked up a lot of old video game stuff from a Facebook Marketplace post for only $150. In this video, we'll talk about how well we did with this haul. Now one cool thing about this lot was that it comes with a lot of games, though a lot of them were in the wrong cases and, well, most didn't have any cases at all. The fact is that the software alone made this purchase well worth it. There was some cool stuff right on top like this late model PS1, a Super NES, and all kinds of controllers and accessories. I was really excited to see this Xbox High Definition AV Pack, as it gives great resolutions and connectivity options for various types of displays, and I actually did need one of these. And here's a weird NES controller clone with the wrong kind of connector on it. Who knows what this is for? And check it out, there's a couple GameCubes in here, nice. And a whole stack of original Playstations in various conditions. Lots of Wii variants in here, which is pretty cool for me as a collector. Here's an old screw connector for using RF connections with your old-ass consoles on your old-ass TV. Hey, Donkey Kong Country 2. And here's an Xbox in really rough shape. And a whole stack of fat model PS2s. I really hope one of these works. They're dirty, but not too bad cosmetically. And there we go, here's the entire haul. At a glance, I'd say not bad for 150 bucks. We'll take a closer look, but first we need to clean this nonsense up. You see, the thing about getting a good deal is there's often a reason. And with this lot, that reason was that it's largely untested, covered in dirt and grime, and smelled like mildew at best. So, Stacy and I got to work cleaning this stuff up to see what kind of condition everything really was in. For most stuff, we used some general purpose cleaner, which I've diluted quite a bit, and paper towels. And we also had some disinfectant wipes on hand and some goo gone for those stubborn bits of goop. We also used little plastic scrapers called Scotty Peelers when we needed to get a bit physical with the consoles. I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description. And we also made occasional use of Mr. Clean Magic Erasers, and we went through a lot of Q-tips for all the detail work. But all in all, it really just comes down to using a bit of elbow grease, taking your time, and paying close attention to what you're doing. Everything generally turns out pretty nice. Okay, so we're finally finished getting this whole mess of stuff all cleaned up. Uh, I'm here with my lovely wife, Stacy. Thank Hi, you for you joining are. me. Um, my wife is not only supportive of this hoarding habit of mine, but she's actually been sitting here helping me clean up this pile of stuff and not clean it only, but uh, actually detail it. We were sitting in here with Q-tips and gloves and the whole bit. So uh, everything's looking real nice. It's not so uh, sketchy looking for storage <laughs> anymore. Uh -huh. Covered in dirt and grime. And, uh, and I, I think P. And we think P. <laughs> so we're gonna go over just uh, some of the highlights of what we found in this $150 lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. And the first thing that I was interested really in looking at was... PS2s. These PS2s. So, you know, as it goes with lots like this, you don't really know the condition of what you're getting a lot of the time. So some stuff's gonna work, some stuff's not. Uh, and these fat model PS2s are, you know, uh, caught my interest because we have a PS2 Slim, but I really like having the original model of this. And so I was kind of hoping that at least one of these worked. And so uh, my lovely wife here not only helped me clean them up, but helped me test them. And then we put little notes on the top here. Uh, and so this one has some video issues and a sticky tray. Um, but as you'll see uh, a lot with fat model PS2s, basically it's kind of the same story over and over again. They'll power up, they'll boot, they'll show the PlayStation logo, uh, but then they won't load discs. Trouble reading discs. Uh, so either something <laughs> wrong with the laser or uh, the, the drive mechanism in some way. So these fat model PS2s might have a future as uh, either just getting straight up repaired, you know, if I can find some other PS2s with good optical drives, um, or we might just maybe soft mod them and, you know, put hard drives in them and use them that way. These were kind of a struggle to clean because of all these little tiny ridges that are 
all around. I know I was using Q-tips to get in there. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you know, you don't really realize all of the little nooks and crannies that these things have until you find a lot um, for 150 bucks in there. Healthy. Yeah, like these little grates in here. We're probably gonna have to girl. take these apart to actually get into there. Yeah. Sure, you can see some of that grime still exists. Uh, but for the most part, these are looking pretty good. You know, some of them had paint and crap on them, and they really uh, came up, you know, with the use of magic erasers and, and things like that. If you look up Scotty Peeler, those things are an absolute lifesaver. That's true. They have plastic ones and they have metal ones, and I would recommend the plastic ones most of the time. For this job. Keep them nice and safe. You don't want to get those little gouges in there. But yeah, for getting stickers off of things or labels, you know. Uh, it helped uh, tremendously with the paint on it yeah. as well kind of lets you chip things off without really hurting the, the finish as long as you're patient and gentle with it. All right, so that'll probably bring us to PlayStation 1s. You've got the good ones and I've got the bad ones. And That's you have the good ones. basically how that worked out. Good ones. Yep, so these ones uh, started right up. I think no issues, right? They just fired right up. They played the, the Sony uh, Splash logo. Stick a little bit. Uh, this one, the drive didn't want to spin on it. It's a little discolored, as you can tell, so it might be a good candidate for some retro bride or something like that. Uh, this one was just kind of sort of in the middle. It played sometimes, or it would start to, but it was kind of sketched, so it just might need some laser cleaning or a little bit of tweaking or something like that. This one, however, was a little bit notable just because of this. So if you're a longtime fan of the original PlayStation, you'll recognize the difference between this one and this one. Uh, having the R This early model has the RCA jacks built right into the unit, uh, which is nice and convenient. Not really a big deal these days, as few people are even hooking them up through RCA connections. Uh, however, there have been rumors, people have said over the years, that these uh, do have the most crisp audio. Don't know if that's actually true. Uh, I've never A-B tested that, but maybe now I will. Next video. Uh, and then the... Uh, Final PS1 is the actual PS1, P-S-O-N-E, which can we talk about that for a minute? These game companies and their naming schemes, like Sony is hardly the worst offender, that would definitely be Microsoft, but yes. the, so the, play, the PS1 is what we used to call this until this came out, which is called the P-S-O-N-E. So I guess then we started calling this the original PlayStation. It's like the original Xbox thing. Uh, this one, it boots, but it seems like it's having trouble loading discs too. So I tried to put uh, Bloody Roar in here and wow, the spindle just came right out with the disc. Look at that. Ew. So yeah, this one's got some trouble. Don't also ruin that. Bloody Roar game. <laughs> <laughs> well. PS1s. I'm glad this made it to the video. <laughs> <laughs> this is stuck down. <laughs> well, I'm just cut this part out. <laughs> That's go. how you fix it. It is how you fix it. <laughs> All right, Wii's and GameCubes. We did pretty good here. Only one of the GameCubes worked. This one, weirdly, didn't take controller input. So that was kind of a weird problem. You expect it to not read a disc or not spin up or something like that. Uh, this one, it came up, but you would push the buttons. <laughs> just nothing would happen. So I it's just dirty. Yeah, I could just need the contacts cleaned or maybe I'll have to open this up and see what the board looks like and see if something funky's going on. Uh, this one here works like a champ. If you look at these two game cubes, one of them, the silver one, is missing an AV uh, digital out. And that's because they actually eliminated that at some point in uh, the GameCube's run. And so the early model GameCubes were the only ones that actually could use uh, component cables to hook up with the, uh, you know, that's when you have like the three separate red, green, and blue analog cables to plug in. You get a better signal, looks great, um, but for whatever reason, it was right at that kind of transition time where we were starting to do HD stuff and we weren't quite there yet. And uh, they kind of axed it and they just went with the Wii. And even with the first Wii, it was still in that kind of transition phase. And uh, so they made component cables for these, but not for very long. And uh, so they shot up to like $300 for just a simple set of cables for these. Uh, the nice thing is, with the Wii, you can hook that up with Wii component cables and you can play your GameCube library. So there's a workaround, and nowadays they have 
all kinds of products that help you do that. I realized that I was not an expert at cleaning these bad boys <laughs> on this first lot. Um, but we have this one here, this white one that like literally everybody has. Uh, this one, bad loading mechanism. Is that the one with the creepy carved initials in the... Yeah, there it is. So whoever RM is, is a psychopath. <laughs> so both of these work, and we're actually really excited to have these because, I mean, these weren't, at least as far as I'm aware, they were not as popular as those original white ones, um, and we didn't have either one of these. So it's kind of nice to be able to, to round out the collection. And there's all kinds of Wii uh, accessories as you get in lots like this. So we'll go through that uh, at so the end of the segment here. <laughs> all right, and then kind of wrapping up the uh, console segment here, we had uh, just a lone SNES and original Xbox. Uh, this thing is just a disaster, and you could kind of tell as soon as you picked it up. It's really rough just all around. It's dirty, and really it looks like rusty. There's like oxidation and just nasty junk there in the fan. And uh, even if you look in like the, the ethernet port, just the, the copper is all just covered in crud and stuff. So I honestly don't know if this one works or not, but it doesn't work in its current state. In it's fact, just, if you... It's falling out of it. <laughs> yeah, if you plug it in and turn it on, uh, when I tried that, it lit the little LED ring up for like a second, and then it went away and never came up again. Uh, so this one probably just has a myriad of issues. Might just pass on this one or keep it around for parts. Uh, the SNES did pretty good. Um, it's not working, but we think this one's just dirty. Uh, these mm -hmm. things are pretty resilient, and it cleaned up so nicely. It looks like it was taken care of. Um, like I said, it didn't work when we first tried it, but I, I have high hopes for that one. I do it's... too, um, and actually I was really excited about this one. Um, just because I, I played the the original Nintendo, I mean, I played it a lot, right? We played Mario and Zelda and all that stuff. Um, but this system was the one that I was dying for as a kid. And actually, uh, it's kind of funny, when this came out, I begged my mom and dad to buy this uh, with some sort of, I think, if I remember correctly, it was like a Barbie horse taking <laughs> care of type game. And my dad did buy this for me, uh, but instead of Barbie horse, he bought me Mortal Kombat, which has sent me on the journey that I'm on today. It was probably a defining moment in my life. And, uh, and now I married her, so <laughs> now you know how that happened. <laughs> That's Mortal right. Kombat. <laughs> yeah, so had I gotten the Barbie horse game, who knows where I'd be right now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these uh, original model Super NES systems have trouble with yellowing. Um, and sometimes they'll ye yellow across the entire unit and sometimes it'll just highlight these parts in the middle, or sometimes it'll be just this middle part or this part up here. It's very weird. It's like the plastic must have been assembled in different places and put together or something, but it, it wears in different ways. And this one really just has a little bit of what you would consider natural discoloration, but it's nothing so extreme as you see on a lot of them in these kind of lots. Uh, the, I think it was the one cartridge we one got. One singular right, cartridge. Was the, uh, for the Super Nintendo, and that was uh, Diddy's Kong Quest behind me there at uh, Donkey Kong Country 2, which is pretty cool because it looked just as nasty as everything else, And uh, but you know, cartridges are forever, and so I blasted some uh, deoxit stuff. I'll put a link in the description below of the, the stuff that I use to clean those kind of electrical contacts, and just hit them with uh, Q-tips and cleaned it out and then scrubbed the card up, and well, it's been running back there this whole time, so no problem. Uh, we're down to controllers and accessories, and this lot had a bunch of that, which is pretty cool. So let's start here. Uh, this was like, PlayStation-y stuff. This is my favorite. I also had these as a kid. I remember playing many, many, many hours of, I think, Tomb Raider, and also uh, Twisted Metal 2, which is one of the greatest games of all time. I'm always Thumper, by the way. Thumper's the best one in the game. 
All right, so PlayStation controllers. We got a couple of Dual Shocks. Um, your favorite kind of translucent jungle green here. Actually, in two variants if you look at the button colors there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a couple of original dog bones. These are uh, before the analog sticks. So if you're that uh, kind of person that likes to play Final Fantasy VII and damn it, I'm playing it the original way I did when I was a kid, there's your controller right there. Then we've got Xbox controllers. Mostly wired uh, original Xbox stuff, a few off-brand ones. Original Microsoft. Mad Cats. This little teeny guy that is the prettiest color. And then, da -da -da -da. It was a Fantastic Four, Fantastic I think. Four. Uh, so yeah, that's our kind of, was that sixth generation uh, controller collection from this lot. GameCube and Wii stuff. And there was quite a bit of this stuff in this lot. Um, there was a lot of time spent cleaning this stuff. Um, you were gracious enough to help me with that daunting task. And it was pretty cool. You know, these GameCube controllers are still uh, very highly regarded. Uh, the community still really likes these. A lot of Smash players still use these. Um, there were a couple of variant controllers or Wiimotes in here that I was pretty happy to see. These are all uh, Wii Motion Plus versions of the Wiimote in different colors there, which was pretty cool. Uh, so there has to be a blue system as well. Yeah, there must be, yeah. yeah. Of course, your standard white Wiimotes. A bunch of those, a bunch of nunchucks. We don't have to get those out. You know what those are. We've got three of these good old steering wheels. You'll remember those from Mario Kart Wii. More of those than I'm ever gonna use in my life, for sure. Um, then we've got, you know, one of the vertical stands for the Wii, uh, some power bricks and things, and then the uh, enhanced sensor bar for the Wii U, which I actually didn't have before, so that's cool. Um, some Nyko uh, charging stations for uh, the Wii Wiimotes, but this is mostly just utility stuff. Mm -hmm. right, and then finally we have software. And there was actually a lot of it in this lot. In fact, I think if nothing else worked in this entire lot of stuff, this would have made this entire thing worth it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, most of it's not complete in box and you're actually seeing our sort of in the middle of sorting out, you know, which ones work and don't. That's what that nope is, my wife's handwriting on it. <laughs> but, you know, there's all kinds of great stuff in here. This whole thing is just chock full of PlayStation 2 titles. Right, and you know, usually when you find a lot like this, it's all um, Madden 2000 and Wii Sports. Yeah. But, um, this really isn't. I mean, I think we may have... There's a few. Two or three of those, but really not many. This had a PlayStation 1 software in it. The funny thing is, and you, you'll find this a lot <laughs> when you're dealing with these kind of uh, hauls too, is a lot of these won't be what they say they are. So, uh, well, let's just see. For example, this is the back and spine to uh, WWF SmackDown, but it's got Crash 2 in it. Um, you got some loose games here, Star Wars for Wii, Complete Saga. Um, we have a Tragically Hip CD with a Wii Fit disc in it. Mm. This is actually a CD disc called Sonic Velocity Drum and Bass and Electro Beats. That's right. Seems like that's for my other show. Right? <laughs> Crimson Skies is not actually what's in here. I already have this game, so no big deal. But uh, this is actually Disney Princess for Wii in there. Uh, and that's pretty much the case for somebody, almost all of these. Somebody there. got their daughter the Barbie horse game. <laughs> <laughs> most, most of these are not. Yeah. This is a PlayStation 2 NASCAR 2005, but if you open it up, it's actually a GameCube game. It's Pac-Man World 2. I think about less than half of them were actually what they said they were. Turok Evolution. But the front of it looks amazing, and I'm kind of excited about it. Now, I'm a Turok fan from way back, but I never played Evolution, so I'm glad to have that game. I have nice. the original two titles from the Nintendo 64, two of the three. One thing that I was really excited to get, uh, if I can find it. So the one that's in the uh, Velocity Drum and Bass disc here is actually Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, and that's actually a great find. Uh, unfortunately, it's not complete in box, but um, actually this uh, artwork is available online, so you can download a high-res version of it. And that's what I'm gonna be doing for a lot of these tites that didn't come, that came in the, the CD wallet. 
Uh, you can get large enough paper, print it out, put it in a DVD case, and then pop it in there. And now that we have extra Wii games, like I don't care about Game Party 3, so hey, I've got a nice white DVD cover that I can put my new Wii. In fact, I think I'm gonna put the European version of the artwork on there because it's way nice. cooler. All right. But just look at all the software in these wallets. I mean, look at this. This PS2 library is just amazing. And there's, I mean, it's not junk stuff. There's Animusha in here. There's SOCOM games, Tenchu. Like there's hits in here. There's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Medal of Honor games, a few Madden titles and things, but really a great library. Somebody had good taste. Yeah, I love this SOCOM game too. And these, my favorite, like almost the whole Ratchet and Clank collection here, which I'm super pumped about. Yep, that's your um, jam. The Conflict games, which I'm also super pumped about. Uh, we actually popped one of those in and played it the other night, and it's just as fun as I remember. And we've got Xbox games over here. Uh, a few of them, you know, when you buy a lot like this, you're gonna see stuff like that. It's not gonna be pretty. Uh, some of the discs will be in rough shape like that. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera. Uh, you know, so some of these aren't gonna be great, but uh, those were in the minority in this lot, which really surprised me because the condition that everything else was in was just really dirty. Uh, so the fact that this stuff was, you know, protected in the CD wallet, you know, it really did its job, apparently. Uh, Time Splitters 2, this is a great find. Just lots of good stuff in here, and then, this small one, we've got mostly PlayStation 1 stuff. All just hanging out in here. So, you know, this is all stuff, most of the stuff, the artwork's available online. So, um, you know, through buying these lots, we can replace a lot of this artwork and the manuals and things. Uh, some stuff we're just never gonna find. Uh, some stuff it makes more sense just to rebuy the software and then, you right. know, sell the other one as cartridge only or disc only. Uh, but for the stuff that you just can't uh, get squared away in the collection, uh, I think I'm just gonna make it a project to print out those jewel cover CDs and DVD covers and even for cartridge games, they have um, uh, universal game cases that artwork will fit in, and it does like N64, Super NES, Genesis, all that kind of stuff. So, all right, folks, so there you pretty much have it. How do you think that we did uh, with this $150? video game lot. Uh, I'd love to know what you think in the description below because, well, I got a little crazier with the next lot, so stay tuned for an upcoming video where I talk about what it looks like when I spend a thousand dollars on a lot like this. Stay tuned.